Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis confirmed that the storm and tornadoes that it brought killed at least five people. Crews are continuing to rescue people from the water, but DeSantis says the worst of the hurricane is now over. It's a tragic thing because it's not like, oh, they should have evacuated. Mean, what do you do when you have a tornado? You kind of duck and cover. It happens so quickly. Those things are really, really strong and powerful. I know the state has been in involved in definitely dozens of rescues. I know our local partners are doing. Uh, we've been supportive of really everywhere around the state, including here. And we'll continue to do that. But my sense is that will stabilize and we're probably going to be on a pretty good footing there pretty soon if we're not already. I want to bring in now CBS News national correspondent Tom Hansen. He's in Daytona Beach, Florida. So uh, Daytona Beach is going to be one of those places that's going to be looking for some federal assistance. Tom, tell me more about the damage that happened there. Hey there, Lana. Well, you're absolutely right. The damage is widespread and noticeable around the city. And I want to point out one thing that may not be the most dramatic imagery, but it is a huge problem along these coastal communities. You can see right here, there is cracking in the ground here. And that was not here yesterday. That means this wall at this hotel, this glass wall is going to inevitably fall into the ocean because of the constant lashing of waves. And there is no beachfront essentially to protect structures like this from powerful storms like what we just saw. So we are watching this very closely. We're not gonna get any closer uh, than, than really where we're standing because inevitably this is going to fall into the ocean. This is what happened during Hurricane Ian, according to the manager of this hotel two years ago. And they said the exact same thing happened uh, two years ago. So they're anticipating that in the hours, days ahead, this wall will be lost uh, to the sea. And that has to do with the corrosion and then mixed with these powerful storms fueled by climate change. That is a huge concern along these coastal communities where there is minimal beach to protect the communities from the ocean. So that is one concern right there. The other thing that we are watching, and at last check, I, I just checked this right before we came on, there are still more than 200,000 people in Daytona Beach who are without power. So those down power lines, people are working to restore them. At our hotel, there were even linemen filing in and ready to go this morning before we went and ventured into other parts of Daytona Beach. Uh, they were ready to go to restore power, but still that is slow going for now because there is the, there are these pockets of flooding that are preventing them from getting to so many communities that need the lights to come back on, Lana. Tom, I think it's such a good point that in addition to some of the destruction that we see, that there is also critical infrastructure failures that are being that are being assessed, cracks that might uh, belie some more serious problems. And all of that is going to be part of what officials need to deal with. And uh, the president said that there's three million people without power right now. I, I spoke with my father in Fort Myers. He said the power's back on for him uh, after six hours of it being out. But I'm wondering what officials are telling you in terms of their biggest concerns uh, for efforts to try and get things put back together, as well as those uh, rescue and recovery efforts. Oh, yeah. Well, I, let's go region by region then, because the concerns vary depending on where we are. So on the West Coast, the side that really bore the brunt of this storm, that Category 3 that just smashed into those communities, obviously the concern on that side is much more focused on recovery and rescue efforts because those are those are communities that essentially in certain parts uh, were completely covered in sand, completely covered in storm surge, and people are really in dire need of rescuing on the western coast. On the eastern coast, there are those concerns as well. However, they, we received a category one storm as opposed to a category three. So the impacts of that, those three to five feet of storm surge did not create as many dangerous cataclysmic events as compared to what we saw on the 
the western side, the Gulf side. And so the focus here is to restore power. It's to wait for waters to recede. So many homes, as we have seen earlier in the day, were inundated with flood water. Uh, and as we, as you know, Lana, flooding is expensive and it takes a long time to rebuild when residential homes are affected to the degree that what we saw, uh, to the degree that we saw, I should say, earlier today. Lana. Tom Hansen, appreciate all that reporting. Thank you. The Horkus kicks off our team coverage from Orlando, Florida. Police and fire crews waded through flooded streets in Daytona Beach Thursday, helping people and pets get to safety. Across Florida, first responders carried out rescues through the night, including in Tampa, where a tree fell on a house with 15 people inside. It's okay. You're okay. Strong winds and heavy rain from Hurricane Milton pounded Tampa, causing serious flooding. But officials say the city was spared catastrophic storm surge when the Category 3 storm took a turn, making landfall about 70 miles south. The storm was significant, but thankfully this was not the worst case scenario. The storm did weaken before landfall and the storm surge, as initially reported, has not been as significant overall as what was observed for Hurricane Helene. With the state still reeling from Helene, Milton brought new destruction. You guys out there want to do something, start praying. Is that the only thing that's going to fix this? It tore the roof off Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, and fire officials say it likely sparked this house fire in Brooksville, Florida. Oh, violent tornado, violent, violent. The storm is also blamed for an outbreak of tornadoes, some of them deadly, even before it made landfall. Power lines are down, leaving millions without electricity. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Orlando. Crews had to make their way through the flood waters and perform water rescues. Miranda Parnell from our Tampa Bay affiliate filed this report from Clearwater. And we are in clear water just off of US 19 at an apartment complex where emergency responders have been doing water rescues all morning long. Now, just look at how much water is in the parking lot here behind me. The police chief of Clearwater tells me that the water's actually been receding a bit throughout the morning. So this is actually lower than it was before. They say that they get into some of these apartments and the water is neck deep. Now, as you can see right here on this rescue boat, you have all different types of people that are being picked up. You have families that have been needing to be rescued. We've seen people who have ambulatory issues, an older woman that had a wheelchair earlier this morning. And so they said that throughout the night they were getting 911 one calls from folks from this apartment complex. It's an area that has been known to flood, but people who live here tell me they've never seen it flood like this before. But, you know, with those wind gusts throughout the night, emergency responders weren't able to make it out to the apartment complex because it was simply too dangerous. Now, residents tell me that they believe that after a couple hours, emergency responders were able to make it out here and start doing these rescues. But as you can see, folks kind of on their balconies, on the stairwell, still waiting to get picked up by these crews and they say that they plan to go to each unit in the apartment complex to make sure that there are nobody no people that have been left behind in this rescue mission here they say they are working with several other teams to make this happen and they want to make sure that everyone is accounted for and safe in clearwater miranda parnell 10 tampa bay President Biden and VP Harris are getting updates on Hurricane Milton's lingering impact throughout the day as the White House works overtime to fight the spread of misinformation and lies about the government's storm response. Some of the information in question has been circulated by politicians, including former President Donald Trump. Mr. Biden has slammed the former president's remarks, calling them reckless and harmful, and just spoke to reporters in Washington about these claims. Americans are putting their lives on the line to do this dangerous work and receive death penalties. Some received death penalties yesterday as a result of reckless, irresponsible, relentless disinformation and outright lies that continue to flow. Those who engage in such lies are undermining confidence in the rescue and recovery work that's opening and ongoing as I speak or continuing. These lies are also harmful to those who most need help. Lives are on the line. People are in desperate situations. Have the decency to tell them the truth. 
Meanwhile, the president uh, and Florida officials, including Republican Governor Ron DeSantis, have been in constant contact following Milton's landfall and leading up to it as well. The White House released a statement saying that the two spoke this morning and, quote, the governor said they are still assessing the damage across the state and thank the president for the extensive federal support to prepare for and respond to the storm. The president reiterated that he will provide any support the state needs to speed response and recovery.